Okay, so we're going to build this TV right here. We're going to build the case of it. And we're going to box model this. So I'm going to start off with a box. Let's throw a box in here. Put in a box. Kind of approximate the shape of what we're going for here. You know, and I, I will even, to help myself, orient my model so that it's kind of got the orientation. Now, with this, uh, with this standard shader on here, it's not really in the viewport looking very clear. You know, I'm going to turn on edge faces. And I'm also going to turn on clay. Uh, now the, the, the faces show up much better. Light plays off it much better. And I'll get a better feel for how it's going to look, the final product, when I start throwing materials on. And I'll be putting materials on it today on the, on the body, just some general materials, because it'll help bring out the, the, how the look of the whole thing is going to be coming together. So I think, I think it's got a pretty good approximate shape there. Does it have to be perfect? Of course not. So one thing, though, that is important here, let's see. Um, this will be different from first, from first block. In first block, this thing was just a straight-up square, isn't it? So I just left my length, width, and height segments at one, 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 because I know I'm working with. I'm just going to have to. Have, I'm going to have to handle all the faces. But looking at your TV, you notice here the screen is right here, but then there's this whole other region sitting right over here, isn't there? Yeah. So I'm going to actually put in some detail that will let me isolate the TV screen from the control panel. So let's see which segment is that I need to put in. There we go. A width segment. I'm going to put in two width segments. This is going to let me, I'm going to move all those vertices that are part of that segment over to the other side, first thing. And then if, if you wanted to have pretty numbers, if you really wanted to have pretty numbers, for me, my pretty numbers are um, 30 centimeters by 50 centimeters by 30 centimeters. Let me look at my picture one last time. Am I okay with that? Yeah, I'm okay with that. It might be a little. No, I think I think the way that it's curving around the back, it's. I'm sure it extends far enough that the length from the front face to the back is about equal to from the top to the bottom. So I'm okay with that. All right. Now that I've got my box here, I'm going to switch to the Modify tab and change this name to TV Case. It's my TV Case. And I'm going to take the box and right-click it and turn it into a editable poly. So now it is no longer a box. It is an editable poly. And I can access things like vertices. And I'm going to take all these vertices right here, when I sweep out this window, I should get four vertices. One, two, three, four, there we go. And if you don't know how I'm panning around like this, I'm just holding my middle, my middle mouse button down while I hold down the Alt key. And I'm gonna always try to keep myself in a front perspective here. And once I start modeling the front, it's gonna be clear that's where I'm at. Plus the, press the W key to get the move tool, the W key, and then I'll just move all these vertices over about right there. Let me see how this compares to the, the look here. Can you see how I'm creating the, the space for the screen on one side and the control panel on the other side? And I'm isolating the geometry. So, you know, the, these will become kind of like a hard point that I'm never going to really modify while I model inside here and I model inside there to create the whole thing. And I also, I noticed that the, the whole edge of this whole thing is curved. So for certain, I need to make sure that I've got like a band that goes all the way around that's raised that I can put a nice little curl on. Initially, this is going to look like uh, very blocky, but we're going to use something called a camphor, and the camphor is going to make it nice and curved and beautiful. You'll see. So um, I'm going to switch to polygons. And I'm going to select the two polygons on the front face. I want to make sure that I don't have anything accidentally selected on the back. If you were to like 
just draw like this little rubber band right there and you're like, I got my two polygons. Well, you also got more than two polygons. You got four polygons. Okay, because when I, when I swept it out, basically whatever polygons that little box crossed will get selected, even the ones I cannot see. So there is a button you can check called ignore back facing. When you're selecting, if you have ignore back facing selected, see, everything's deselected, nothing is selected now. Now when I do this, sweep out with a little rubber band, just got those two and that is all I got. Ignore back facing turned off that, that part where not only is it going to get the ones you can see, it's going to select the ones you cannot see. So that turns that off. It's valuable to know about that. If you don't turn it off and you select those two polygons, whatever you do to them, you're going to do to the other ones you have selected. So you can blow your model up real fast. Now here's where I'm going to use in insert, in inset. Inset is over here in the edit polygons menu. It's this little button right here, inset. And I'm going to use the controls to do this. And this is how you're going to, this is how you're going to create that front face of any TV you build in all likelihood. This is how you'll create that face. Now, do you notice what happened here? It, it took that whole polygon and shrunk it in, didn't it? And it connected the corners to a new edge all the way around. We got four new edges connecting. Five, six, because I put this little bit in here too. So five, six edges connected in there. And um, the things I can adjust here is the inset amount. Now, looking at my TV reference image, and I have to keep coming back to this, you know, to let it guide me. Um, I'm going to do this inset. in two steps. First step, I'm going to set it to about 0.5 centimeters. Now click the check mark. I also could have just clicked the little plus symbol. I'll reopen the menu and I'm just going to inset it one more time with that same distance and hit the little check mark. Now that, that part that I just put in is what I'm going to use to build that whole lip right there that goes around the outer edge, okay? Those two insets are going to get turned into that, that little lip. Now the next face I need to handle is this face right here, this face right here. So as I go to get into this face, I definitely no longer want to have that polygon selected, do I? That's not my, that's not the object of my attention right now. Now I want to work on this, this part of the TV's face. Back to my TV. Okay. I'm going to do another inset. Can you see it coming? Another inset? I'm going to have to do another inset to bring that in. Then I'm going to need to push the whole thing in, aren't I? I need to push it in. Then after I push it in, I have to do something here to end up with a curved screen. And getting the curved screen is pretty darn cool. How we get the curved screen and how we're going to adjust that to happen. All right. So first off, this first. You know, so, so far, I've set myself up to do that little ridge, which goes all the way around the whole TV. Now I'm going to get this section right here. So back in Max. Got this polygon selected. I'm going to click on the inset menu, and this time I'm going to increase it a bit, like point eight. Oh, did I just do eight? Point eight. Here we go baby. Come on, image here. Yeah, I'm happy with that. I'll go ahead and click the check mark, cement that. I'm committed now. Now 
Now I need to do an extrusion. I'm gonna push that face in. I've set this part up here. I've set that part up there. Now I need to get this, it's getting pushed in. So to push that in, I'm gonna use the extrude tool. I could also use the bevel tool. In fact, I think I favor using the bevel tool. Now, this thing just gave me, by default, it gives me a bevel, just pushed everything out, didn't it? It doesn't know what I want to do with it. I'm going to right-click the spinners, just like the kid in the sword video did. I like that, zeroing out the tool, and then, you know, after you zero out the tool, now I know I got to go negative with this number, so I'm going to push myself in a bit. See how I pushed myself in? And I want to bevel a little bit. And there we go. That's going to cry. That's going to, and a little exaggeration is okay. But can you see how I'm creating that? The word, I guess, would be concavity. I'm concaving it. I'm caving that in. Are you with me? Okay. So with that, I'm going to hit the check mark and be happy with that. It's beginning to look like the front of a TV, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. Now, this next piece is going to turn into my screen. This part's going to turn into the screen. And everything here is going to be kind of rounded at the edges. Um, but let me get this screen started here. Click on edges. I'm going to click that edge, this edge, this edge, and that edge. I've got the four edges that are down there at the bottom of that bevel. Just those four edges at the bottom of that bevel. And I'm going to click this thing called the camphor tool. And there goes the camphor tool. Now, what the camphor tool did is it, it's actually, it looks like it's protruding in. I want to change my segments to like four. And there we go. But it looks concave. Yeah, I don't want concave. Let's try going negative. No. Why am I going concave? On the front. Ah! I remember. <laughs> All right, cool. Um, I'm going to do another bevel. This one I'm going to bevel out. So let me, let me select that polygon. I'm going to select this polygon. I'm going to select this polygon, and this time, instead of beveling in, I want to bevel out, which means I want to bring this thing up. I want to bring it so that it's sticking out right there. There we go. Yeah, that's nice. That might be too much. Keep in mind, in the reference image, you notice here, once we get down to that point there at the bottom of this, of this lip right here, when we get to the screen, the screen actually curves outward, doesn't it? So I need to provide that, that underlying structure here in order to get that curve outward, but I don't, I don't want to be um, out too much. Let's see here. That will flatten it a little bit. It doesn't need to be much. So yeah, put it in about 0.5. So doing what I did last night with TV number two, doing the rebuild on it, I realized that I, I made this part too steep both times. I made this part too steep. So for you guys, I'm not going to make it as steep and see what happens now. I'll click the check mark. Be happy with that. Switch back to edges, and edges seems to have forgotten what I had selected pretty much because I basically broke those edges. Let me start. I want to start from the edge where I want it to begin. Turn off the scale tool dummy. It's four edges. So now, again, these are the four edges that are down in that, they're in a concavity. They are at a lower point. And this structure is coming up out of, the, out of the, the face here. So now when I hit, click the camphor menu, 
should be camphoring up here. I did it again. Did I say that sometimes you're going to watch me fail? Almost flattened it out. I can see things my way. I'll move that polygon out and I'll increase the bevel. Switch back to edges. And hit camphor and, hmm, okay, I needed to push it some. I just needed to push it out a little further. But do you see now I'm getting an outward curve on the face of that? Let me undo that just a little bit more and let me go ahead and move that polygon out just a little bit more. It needs some exaggeration for me to force it to then camphor it and curve it down real nice and pretty. I need to have it moved up and see if we get those four edges here. That camphor button. Yeah, it looks, looks pretty good. I'm impressed. All right. I'm going to um, hit the green button here and let's see, somebody sent me something on eHaul Pass. And I think this would be a good spot for me to do like an incremental save, do a save here on this. So I'm going to save. And this is going to be in my see, classic TV one, first block. I can do one here, second block. Second block TV three. Stage one. All right. Good. Let me go ahead and stop the video.